Sclerotinia white mold. On our own farm, let me just tell you what happened to us last year. We had about 1,000 acres of soybeans. We actually, fortunately, had lots of corn last year. But anyway, on 1,000 acres of soybeans, we had about 20 acres, including the field that I'm standing in right here, 20 acres out of 1,000 that yielded almost zero. We were going along in some spots, 80, 90 bushel beans, zero, okay? That's a huge deal. You think about the lost income there. If I lose even 60 bushels per acre, I lose $600 per acre. White mold can absolutely devastate soybeans and many other crops. So we're gonna talk about some control strategies today. All right, first of all, let's start with some of the cultural methods that you may use for control. You may say, well, what about tillage, Darren? How does tillage work? Because honestly, that's what our grandparents would have done is let's just do some deep tillage, try and bury the sclerotia. And you can, but that sclerotia can survive in the soil for a long, long time. So tillage uh, before the crop, you know, it's, it's a temporary fix. It can maybe lessen the pressure a little bit. I'd prefer to leave all that sclerotia on the surface and hope that it breaks down with soil microbes or breaks down with sunlight and weather and those kinds of things. I'll, I'll take my chances that way. We also have some guys that say, I use tillage with cultivation in crop. So I'm gonna cultivate in between the rows and try and knock out those little mushrooms that are going to form that will eventually uh, shoot out the white mold spores. Boy, you would have to be so fussy on timing to get that, and you'd probably have to cultivate multiple times. Now, if you say, well, if I can get that first flush taken care of, if I get some late season, it's not gonna hurt me as bad, I won't argue with you about that, but still, it's not going to be an effective means of controlling it 100%. Now, you might say, uh, Brian, why should I listen to you guys on control strategies when you didn't even control it on your own farm? Well, let me just tell you real quick what happened to us. This disease is expensive to control. The best product to spray for a fungicide is Endura. It's $35 an acre. Last summer, I didn't want to spend $35 an acre because I didn't think we had any chance of having white mold. Typically, when we're very dry, we don't have a white mold problem. Well, last summer, we were very dry. If you would have come a couple days before our field day in late July, you would have seen everything looking brown. We happened to luck out and get seven tenths of an inch of rain right before the field day. So stuff kind of greened up a little bit for the field day. But my point here is we went seven weeks in the middle of the summer with a grand total of 1.2 inches of rain. That's not much, but here's what happened. We're getting such production out of our soybeans now. We've handled fertility and a lot of these other things. We had beans that were over shoulder high, some of the tallest beans we'd ever seen. Well, when you have beans that are that huge, there's a microclimate in those soybean fields, and I'm not going to make this mistake again. We absolutely are gonna treat for white mold every year, at least in the spots that have been bad before. If I look back at our yield map, from two years earlier, from 2015, the exact same spots that had a little white mold in 2015 had a lot of white mold in 2017. I also didn't think this was gonna be a big problem because we'd sprayed contans in the fall of 2015, right after soybean harvest, just like we had been told to do. That's a biological that literally eats the sclerotia. And I thought, oh, we're in good shape. Well, we saw no response from that. And then we talked to the manufacturer about, well, why didn't we see a response out of contents? And they said, well, did you keep the product frozen until you went out to spray it? And I said, what? Frozen? I didn't know it had to be frozen. It was sitting in our warehouse for a month. And they said, well, that contents was dead then. <laughs> I go, oh no, I spent $25 an acre on something that was dead. Yup, you did. And this is just a good lesson. With these biological products, you got to make sure you talk to the manufacturer and find out what handling characteristics does it have. Contans, while I don't love the fact that it has to be kept frozen until right before I'm going to spray it, I have seen very good results in the past with certain trials out of contans. Didn't work for us, but now I know why. All right, so there are a few things that you can do. You can't just throw up your hands and say, well, I can't stop white mold. What you can do is you can make multiple applications of fungicide. Like Brian was talking about fungicide just a little bit. Hey, Endura is the best of these products, but there are a number of different chemistries that can be used and they're from different families too. So you can get out and start at R1, right at that first bloom. You have to be really fussy about that. Don't wait until, oh, we're already, we already have pods out there. Well, guess what? You've had a lot of blooms now that have dried up and that's where this sclerotia can get in. So we need to make sure that we're watching that. And then you're gonna spray about every couple of weeks, probably two, if not three applications, depending on weather and, and what kind of white mold pressure that you've got. 
The other thing they can do before flowering is use cobra. Many of the university trials that we've looked at, and even some of the farmer trials that, that we've been a part of, we've seen better results from cobra than other things. Now, we can debate about, well, is it that we dropped a few leaves, or is there some chemical thing going on inside the plant? Either way, it's reduced the amount of white mold that that plant has had, and that's improved yields in those situations. So that's another thing that can be done. Finally, I want to talk about your fertility program for your farm. And yes, so often the problems that we have get back to fertility. You think about it just like us as humans. If we have better nutrition, we're better able to fight off disease. All right, so specifically here, we want to talk to you today about manganese. What are your manganese levels in the soil? What are your manganese levels in your plant tissue? Ideally, what we're looking for on a DTPA soil test, not a Malik 3, but a DTPA, is more than 20 parts per million. Now, to some degree, this has something to do with soil pH from what we've seen. So if you have soil pH above 7, we want you to try to drive that pH down a little bit. That'll help with your manganese availability. The other thing is just putting manganese out there, period. What we find on most farms is they focus on NP and K over the years, maybe sulfur recently, but they haven't addressed manganese for years, and they've been pulling it out of the soil for years. Well, there is an absolute correlation between good manganese levels and lower sclerotinia white mold levels. You can certainly try doing some foliar applications with chelated manganese in your crop. Uh, I would track that with plant tissue tests too to see if you're actually getting that manganese into the crop and then see what kind of difference that makes for white mold. We have not done those studies on our farm with the foliar applications like that, but it's something that we're looking into as well. Well, once again, sclerotinia white mold can be a really bad problem on your farm. Just make sure you're getting it addressed and getting it addressed early. Right at first flower is when your first treatment needs to be. Well, another thing that's important if you want top yields is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this weed coming up later in the show.